Tonight, Rock Hudson, one of Hollywood's handsomest leading men. Women dreamed of being with him. Men dreamed of being him. But for decades, he kept his real self a secret until a shocking TV appearance exposed a double life. Less than three months later, that life cut short by a deadly disease. Tonight, 18 years after his tragic death, friends, colleagues, even an ex-girlfriend remember Rock Hudson. Joining us, Tony Randall. Rock's co-star in classic romantic comedies like Pillow Talk. Gino Lollabrigida, the Italian bombshell who also acted with Rock Hudson. Actress Elaine Stritch, who dated Rock Hudson. The famed columnist Liz Smith, one of Rock's closest friends, and some say she helped keep his secret. Actress Diane Ladd, Rock's friend and co-star. And Rock Hudson's longtime publicist and friend Dale Olson. And they're all next on Larry King Live. Hard to believe this, but this is the eve of the 18th anniversary of Rock Hudson's death. He died on October 2nd, 1985, at his home in Beverly Hills, California. He was only 59 years old. Tony, where were you when you learned of Rock's passing? I, I'm embarrassed to say I, I think just at home. I, I have no specific recollection. Where were you, uh, Elaine? Um, hopefully I was working. Any more than that, I don't, I don't remember. Liz, do I you really remember, remember where you were? Well, I had sort of been monitoring the last days of, uh, of his illness after he was returned. Remember the, the horrible footage of them bringing him off of a plane? He had gone to uh, France, I think, to try for some radical treatment, and he never was you know, well after that, or even hardly well enough to have friends. So he did have many friends that visited him in the end. Were you one of them? Well, I was one of his friends, but I wasn't one of his real intimates. And I guess uh, your, your setup of me a while ago that I was one of the people who kept his secrets, I guess in a way I, in a way I did, but not in the beginning, because I didn't have a clue. But you did learn of it before the public learned of it. Yes, I did learn of it at the time he t told me that he was being blackmailed by a woman. And, uh, well, I'll tell about that later. Okay. Diane Ladd, do you remember where you were when Rock passed? I do indeed, Larry. About uh, two weeks earlier, a gentleman who produced a lot of films with Doris Day and Rock had called me and said Rock wanted to see me before he died. And then um, I didn't get to see him. It was supposed to be arranged, and it wasn't arranged. And I was in Mississippi with relatives when I heard the news that Rock had uh, died. Gina Lola Bridget, do you remember how you heard? Yes, I was in Italy, and uh, I arranged with uh, Rai Television as a journalist uh, uh, come to Los Angeles to see him uh, for a uh, uh, for a, a, a big uh, uh, evening, but uh, I was uh, stuck in uh, India, and uh, I arrived mm. late uh, of that uh, big evening. Because one. Uh, sure. I, I, well, I was at Rock's house every day, uh, and uh, the day he died, actually, I was not there. But I, I, I came over to the house, of course immediately because uh, I was there every day. I saw he was day. dying. Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, it was it was apparent for some time that he was dying and we anticipated it, you know, daily. Tony, did you speak to him after he had had AIDS, after we knew he had had AIDS? I don't know when he first found out, but uh, I didn't see much of him off the set. I only saw him half a dozen times off the set. What was he like to work with? Oh, a joy. Big kid, full of fun, hard worker. I, I love the guy. Did you know of the secret part of his life? You heard talk about that, but you heard talk about that about everybody. I, I never listened to it. I never paid any attention to it. I didn't believe it because he, he was such a virile guy. And uh, his dressing room was always full to <laughs> bursting with gorgeous chicks. <laughs> 
Elaine, you, you, you were romantically involved with him, were you not? Well, sure. I was crazy about him. Um, you asked Liz about, did she know before the public knew? I thought you were going to ask me the same question. I was about to say, you can just go on so many dates until you get a slight message. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> um, and then you say, is there something wrong with me? Because you, you, you take the guilt, you know. You take the guilt, as, in a, as is true in a lot of ways. But um, I, when you said to Tony, did you see Rock when he had AIDS? I want to tell you something, Larry. I was out in, in Hollywood, California, to do a musical. We know Sylvia K. Fine. Uh, Sylvia Fine K. Danny or K. Wife, yeah. yeah, 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 that, that does it. Um, she used to produce musicals on television, musical comedy evenings. Mm -hmm. And um, I was in one of them with Rock, and Rock was in, Rock was in it. And I cannot tell you the first day of rehearsal that I went to. And there was Rock looking the way he does in that terrifying picture, you know, when he was really near dying and thin, 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 and old, old, old. And he rushed over to me, picked me up in his arms, and gave me a hug and said, what are you doing for dinner tonight? I cannot tell you how emotionally uh, involved I was at that moment. And we went out to dinner to an Italian restaurant in Beverly Hills, and it was one of the most frightening evenings of my life. He had a half frightening because frightening because there was this man, there was Rock Hudson sitting there having half of his scotch and soda, and that's all he could handle, and uh, that's a crime in any man's language, and looking at me and telling me that he had anorexia, huh. and I tell you it was awful. And then oh. we went home. I mean, I was just spent. I've never had such an evening in my life because I truly loved this man. I, tru I would never be in love with Rock Hudson, but I truly loved him. Dale, you're going to add? Well, I was going to say, I tried, Elaine, to talk Rock out of doing that uh, because, because of the way he looked. And he insisted. He said, I want to see and I want to work with Elaine Stritch. And nothing would stop him from doing that. Uh -huh. uh, wow. He, he really wanted to see you. Liz Smith, why, why, do, why did, did he, he change the whole focus of AIDS, didn't he? Well, his death was certainly the, like the flashpoint of publicity. Uh, I think Elizabeth Taylor was already involved in the AIDS fight before she knew that Rock had AIDS, but that certainly galvanized her. She had loved and worshipped and adored him, and he loved her. And I think everybody... You know, we started writing about AIDS a little bit in 1983, and uh, uh, people were awful about it. And so uh -huh. Rock's death was so terrible that it was an enlightening experience. If you could say anything good came out of it, I guess you could say that. But you had to know him when he was in his prime to know what a terrible tragedy it was. Because he was so special? He was just a great guy. He was a guy that you just couldn't resist him. And uh, I think I went for years thinking that I was uh, sort of emotionally involved with him. I thought he liked me and I liked him and I always hoped it could develop into something else. Well, that sounds <laughs> silly now, but uh, I had real romantic uh, daydreams about Rock and I think every woman who ever met him did. In fact, in your terrific uh, memoir, Natural Blonde, you used to doodle the name Mrs. Rock Hudson, right? <laughs> well, Come on, admit it. <laughs> the funny thing about that is I went to oh. Rome with Elaine as her secretary when she was going to make a farewell to arms. And Elaine and I had big suite in a hotel, and she went off to work every day. And I... I knew Rock already. I had known him since 1953. And I used to just have these incredible daydreams, but Elaine was the one having dates with him, and I was just <laughs> furious. I used to just skulk around the hotel and wait for her discarded Italian boyfriends. <laughs> we'll be right back with more. We'll get into working with, uh, with Rock Hudson, more about his life and stories and your calls. Don't go away. Get your clothes on. You get out of here. We're going to my apartment. I've seen it. You'll see it again. Now put your clothes on. I won't. Are you getting out of that bed or am I coming in after you? You wouldn't dare. Oh! Oh, how dare you! Oh, you put me down! I said put me down! I said put me down! What are you doing? Where are you taking me? I'm warning you. You put me down. Oh, good morning, Mr. 
Mrs. Good Wilson. morning. Now you put me back in my bed. Larry King Live is brought to you by Plavix. What are you doing? I like fresh air when I'm sleeping. I will not be poisoned by damp night air. Courtesy and consideration for others. God, you've got cold feet. Complaints, complaints, nothing but complaints. I could complain a little too, you know. You ever cut your toenails? <laughs> Tony, what was, what was, what, how good an actor was he? He became a good, he became a good actor. His, uh, his career was odd. He became a star before he learned how to act. And he learned how to act <laughs> after he was a star. That's true. But in our pictures, he was wonderful. He had never before played comedy, and he was rather unsure of himself at first. And when he found himself comfortable, when he began to enjoy it, he was absolutely marvelous. Gina, what was it like for you to work with him? It wasn't was fantastic. <laughs> he was a good actor. He was uh, funny. He had a rhythm for comedy. But uh, besides that, uh, we liked each other. And uh, even uh, after the film, uh, after the scenes, we were together. And uh, he courted me. Aha! Uh -huh. uh, yes, and uh, he insisted, I mean, he gave, he had the initiative normally you know, I take the initiative, but at that, that, uh, that time, he, he wanted. And of course, you know, how I, I liked him. It's uh, easy to like him at that time. He was a uh, marvelous, was 61. We made together come September in yeah. uh, uh, near Rapallo. So it was a good atmosphere. And then uh, we came to Rome and uh, we had a wonderful time together, and uh, but you then, weren't uh, in love with him. He was in love with me, and I and I was in love with him. Uh, you know, you can't uh, you can't stop when uh, you you like uh, one person, but uh, yeah. then uh, at the end, uh, mm. it happened that uh, I don't know he uh, in a particular situation he fall asleep so I you know we can I don't gather know what if, that uh, was uh, we can know, imagine what that you was. know sometimes yeah, a person uh, is tired and fall asleep yeah, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Elaine Stritch what but, was he like to work with that was funny uh, I'll tell you about <laughs> I'll tell you about Rock's humor and first of all he loved women he really loved women. And it's interesting, Larry, because, you know, I know a lot of really special, talented, I know a lot of people in, the, in show business, and there so many of them are wonderful. And, you know, everybody's, it seems today that everybody's principles are kind of taking on a new personality. Everybody does everything. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's amazing. The fact that Rock Hudson had... Um, romantic liaisons with the same sex I mean come on if in a perfect world and I'm not saying it is but nobody paying attention to that today the trick is that when you do performances on in the screen and you're kissing a woman why can't that be looked at just in the same way that people look at Philadelphia with Tom Hanks we all know Tom Hanks is straight I mean, the last time I looked. So, <laughs> you know, let's put it this That's way. Right. Why well can't put. we? Why can't we believe that Tom Hanks is gay? We did believe he was gay. So when we go to see Rock Hudson, he's an actor. Believe and him I'll straight. Tell you, yeah, That's you right. bet, Larry. And I'll yeah. bet you, I'll bet you any amount of money that Rock Hudson had a lot of affairs with women. I actually think he, I'm almost he positive he right. did with the. Dale Elizabeth says he Taylor. did. Diane, Absolutely. what was he like to work with, Diane? Well, Larry, um, 
I'd like to share something with you, some amazing good that came out of Rock's experiences. When I first uh, met Rock, it was long distance. I was uh, embracing teenagehood. I was in a little movie theater in Mississippi, and I was going on 13, and I saw this cowboy movie that starred Rock Hudson. He was the most gorgeous thing I had ever laid eyes on, and he got shot in the movie. I jumped up and screamed, no! And I heard a voice <laughs> behind me say, oh, by God, Diane, why don't you be sitting down? And it was Father Burns from my church, and I was morbidly <laughs> embarrassed. And little did I know that the circle of my life would lead me to a time when Rock Hudson's energy and mine would actually help save a life. After I had the privilege of starring with him in a movie, he and I and Helen Hunt, and he was amazing to work with, an amazing human being. And after his death, I was asked to play his mother in a um, TV show about his life. And I really did not like the script. I did not feel that it began to do his life justice. But I said, if I don't do it, they're going to do it anyhow. And if I do do it, maybe I can use my energy to make it a little bit better. So I went to producers and I said, I'll do this movie for very little money if you will donate $25,000 to a hospital that's doing immune-related disease research and helping people. They agreed and they wrote a check and it was given to, a, at my choice, a hospital in Scottsdale that was doing work with AIDS patients. And one of the patients came in, they had given him three to nine weeks to live. When nine weeks were up, uh, during that time, he couldn't take AZT, it would cripple the hands. But I discovered that they could give a patient with AIDS a thymus shot, the cost is $10 and remove pain. So I'd like for them to hear more talk about that. And uh, this patient mm. was given chelation and many alternative modalities that at the end of the nine weeks, he didn't die, Larry. He walked out of the hospital and his mother from Dallas, Texas that day, synchronistically, I was there talking to the doctors about some medical programs and she went in crying to thank the doctors for her son's life. And they said to her, oh no, don't thank us. That actress, Diane Ladd is here, you thank her. And I was in the hall talking and this woman came running down that hall like Mary Magdalene. She threw herself at my feet with her arms around my ankles and sobbing thanked me for saving her life. And I grabbed her by the shoulders and I stood her up and I said, no ma'am, you do not thank me. You thank my beloved friend, Rock Hudson, because in his final breaths, he stood up and told the truth that would help fellow human beings wow. and humanity. Mm -hmm. And that is a, well, by God, true story. We'll take a break and we'll be right back with more. We'll go to your calls at the bottom of the hour. Don't go away. Now turn away. I'm over 21. Here. It's a pity. They were very becoming. Mm-hmm. Now, don't let Ben Cappen catch you guzzling on that. We'll both get life. Did you find out anything about Miss Barkley? Yes. Yes, indeed. What? What'd you find out? Oh, look at him. The bedridden Romeo. Miss Barkley is arriving on the 8 o'clock train. She's coming. You're not kidding. Boy, she must be something. Don't you walk out that door. What will I lose? The privilege of seeing you every September? Well, I'm tired of being girl of the month. You know you're more than that. Oh, don't worry, Robert. You won't have any trouble. Just put an ad in the paper. A girl wanted short hours, pleasant working conditions. There's only one drawback. There's no chance of advancement. Dale, you say that Ralph, that Rock knew a lot of women. Oh, Rock loved. I mean, uh, Rock was loved women, with and, women, and he. Yes, he had affairs with women. I mean, uh, he was married once. Uh, yes, he was married once. He was married uh, quite happily for a period of time, uh, but uh, he had romances on uh, location. Uh, he had a lot of romances. Did he Ross loved Hunter, women. Did Ross Hunter send him over the top? That's the story. Did he? I, I don't that quite Ross Hunt, that he, he was sort of borderline and then went totally. No, I don't think that's necessarily true. Uh, you know, I think Rock was like a great many people. He was a sexual human being and uh, attracted to both sexes. And torn. 
Obviously uh, torn by it, right? Yeah, but he didn't let anybody know that. Drank he didn't a lot. show that. Drank. He, he drank a great deal. I think I think that's why he fell asleep when he was with, with Gina, as a matter Liz, of fact. Liz, you said you'd elaborate on, on sitting on a story on, on that. Uh, okay, on but that. can I just, Larry, let me just say something first about Rock. He always flirted with everybody. This was, he, he I think he yeah. thought this was his function in life. And, uh, <laughs> You know, he told this reporter, Bose Hadley, in an interview that was never ha was seen until after he died, that he uh, actually had only been gay after he came out of his mother's womb. I mean, he had a lot of sardonic, <laughs> sarcastic things like that to say and to make fun of himself and so forth. But he was just indefatigable when it came to his relationships with women. He wanted to impress them. Maybe it was part of the role playing he was doing. But I think honestly, he liked all people. And I think that was very well put by Dale that he was a sexual human being and, and he was beautiful and everybody wanted him, so why not? Well, to get to my story uh, about the sitting on the story, very late in I guess in uh, about 20 years ago, he told me that he was being blackmailed by a woman. Now, I, though I had known him since 1953, he had never told me he was gay. And I didn't really begin to hear that until after my misadventure in Rome when I was, thought I was in love with him. And uh, he, he called me and said, look, Liz, I'm having trouble and this woman is going to sue me. She's going to release my... Uh, story to the tabloids. So I said, what's her name? So he told me, and I said, well, I just happen to have a really nasty file on this woman, and you, <laughs> I would never use it myself, but you can show it to her if you want, and maybe she'll back off. And he took the file, and he did do that, and he quash the story so Liz. I guess I was <laughs> I am culpable I'm guilty I helped him cover up but you know what if it had come out that he was gay it would have been the end of his career and uh, I, I don't think the world was ready for it then I'm not sure they're ready for it now you don't see too many of these big romantic guys in Hollywood coming out name one yeah. Rupert Tony, Everett, is that, but Tony is that true that uh, a big star still can't come out? I rather imagine so, yes. Um, it's a mythological life. The public wants to believe and they want to believe that they are the heroes they seem on the screen. And so we don't want that image destroyed. No, 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 it must never be destroyed. Dale? Yeah, but you know, the interesting thing is, and it's different than it is today, but Rock Hudson was truly maybe the nicest person who ever came to Hollywood. And he was nice to everybody. He was nice to the people he worked with. He was nice to the press. And everybody took care of him. The studio took care of him. Everybody had the rumors. Everybody heard about the possibility of his being gay, but very few people ever printed it. Uh, the press were Just so kind to him. Liked them. They, everybody you're respected him and liked him. Absolutely, because he was nice to everybody, and he and there was no mystery. Today, publicists keep people away from the press, and the press are dying to find out anything they can find. They didn't care about Rock uh, and, really? and his life. They just liked him. We'll take a break and come back and go to your phone calls. We'll reintroduce the panel as well. Rock Hudson died 18 years ago, October 2nd, 1985. We'll be right back. John Henry Thomas, of course. Well, you were on George Custer's right flank when you charged the breastworks at Madisonville, weren't you? We did a job that day, didn't we? You were damn cruel. Cruel? Those Johnny Rebs had 40-pounders looking right down our throat. Did you think you were coming to a ball? Sergeant! Yes, sir. <laughs> well, I can find the time. I'm going to sit down and write the social history of bourbon. see him right before he died? Oh, yeah. I was with him the night before. And he couldn't remember today. He could remember yesterday. But he couldn't remember the present. And we laughed about making chocolate martinis. And oh, he was just skin and bones. And I thought, I am going to do everything in my living power.
to get at this disease and kill it by its throat. Elizabeth Taylor. As we introduce our panel before we go to phone calls in New York, Tony Randall, he co-starred with Rock in Pillow Talk, Lover Come Back and Send Me No Flowers. Tony is one of the enduring legends in American theater and oh, film. Oh in by Mean It, in Paris, Gina Lola Brigida, actress, artist, co-starred with Rock Hudson in 1961's Come September, and in uh, Strange Bedfellows in 1965. She's also a sculptress. We'll ask about that in a while. In New York, the wonderful Elaine Stritch, friend of Rock, dated him, appeared with him in a farewell to arms, just concluded an enormously successful engagement, a one-woman show in New York's theater. Liz Smith, the famed syndicated columnist, best-selling author, and a longtime friend of Rock's. In Vancouver is Diane Ladd, a friend of Rock Hudson's, who co-starred with him in 1976's Embryo, also appeared in the 1990 TV movie about him. She's in Vancouver, by the way, filming the upcoming ABC series Stephen King's Kingdom Hospital. And in Los Angeles is Dale Olson, Rock Hudson's longtime publicist and good friend. Liz has a scoop for us a minute, but I want to get one call in. Quincy, Illinois, hello. Hi, Larry. Hi. I was just wondering how long Rock had been married to Phyllis and uh, what happened to her? What? I think that's Liz. Liz, I think <laughs> this is funny. Yeah. It's a cue, Larry. <laughs> no, I mean, that was the call. It is. Okay. Well, what uh, happened? I don't know exactly how long they were married, maybe three or four years. Dale probably knows. He six knows years. everything. Six years, he uh, said. Six years, okay. But uh, uh, Phyllis Gates telephoned me today. I believe she was in Los Angeles. She didn't say. She's in an assisted care home having had uh, lung surgery. And she said just one thing. She just said, Liz, if you please don't foment the rumor or the myth that I had an arranged marriage with Rock Hudson. She said it might have been arranged from Rock's point of view or from Henry Wilson's mm -hmm. point of view. Henry Wilson was the man, she was a secretary to him and then she married Rock and he was Rock's agent. She said they might have arranged it but it, there was nothing arranged about it as far as I was concerned. So her emphasis is to say she was actually emotionally involved and married to Rock in a very real way. And I, I don't know the truth of that, but that's her statement. That's really nice. Well, what do you think, Dale? Rock always said that. Rock always that said... he had a rela full yes, relationship. Rock always said that Henry introduced them, but that it was a very pleasant relationship and a very warm and a romantic relationship. Well, I that think she was it. just... I think she was just crushed when uh, Rock wanted a divorce, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, any woman would have been. If I'd been Mrs. Rock Hudson, I'd still, <laughs> today I'd still be writing those little notes. Liz, you keep bringing that up. I think this is an eternal wish, Liz. It was. I want to tell you, he was such a spectacular person. I agreed with Dale. He was a really nice human being. I never knew him to do anything mean or he was as cute as, as he could be and just irresistible. Chillicothe, Ohio. Hello. Larry, is it true that Rock Hudson had an affair with actress, singer Jim Neighbors? We've heard that for years. Any truth, Dale? No, that is not they true were at all. In Hawaii. That, that, was, that, that was a joke that somebody played that they thought was a joke and it turned out to backfire. It was not true at all. They were, in fact, friends. But no, they did not have an affair. They were not. No, lovers. it was not. No, it was not an emotional. Film. Elaine, would you back the statement about him being a nice guy? Oh, Larry, are you kidding? He was terrific. He was Larry, terrific. Don't do your things now. You know what? Don't arrange your clothes. Oh, uh, look at the camera, Elaine. It's an old-fashioned trick in show business. Am I looking at the right one? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm so modest and shy and unassuming. Um, <laughs> Rock, um, yeah, let me tell I mean, you a quick, quick story about Rock, about how cute he was and how he was with women. In a scene in Farewell to Arms, I had to um, uh, smuggle some booze into Rock's room when he was in the hospital. I was a nurse, as we saw in that clip. Mm. And so I smuggled them in by putting them in my uniform, in my bosom. 
So the the Bowles brandy or whatever that bottle was, it's round at the bottom and skinny at the top. So I got him in that way, and we shot, we rehearsed the scene about seven times, and I told my director that I really was getting very sore, and could I rehearse the next two times without the bottles in my bosom? And so I took him on, and the next rehearsal, Rock looked up and he said, I thought you were going to do it without the bottles. <laughs> <laughs> He was adorable, that that guy. That's a great story. Tony, yeah. he was funny? Oh, yeah. Yeah, very funny. Uh, he, on the set, you have a lot of time, and you tell stories. And uh, he would tell us about his early days in the movies when he didn't know anything about how to act. And he said he would stand there on the set looking like this. <laughs> and because he didn't know what to do. Well, one day, oh, that's great. One day... We were having trouble on the set. We were doing the same scene over and over again. It was just getting worse. And I looked over and he was going like this. <laughs> <laughs> and I just collapsed. I just couldn't stop laughing, which didn't help him a bit. <laughs> Golden Colorado, hello. Hi, Larry. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, I was wondering if Rock, in, uh, was he more comfortable doing comedy or drama or which one he enjoyed more? Diane? Well, I think that he was uh, expert at both. I think that he uh, had comedy in his heart because he had a pure heart, and he had a way of doing comedy from realistic, from an honest point of view. And he also was a, a, a very exciting, dramatic actor. Um, it was quite an amazing experience to work with him. And he had more charisma, I think, than any one person that I've ever met in person in my life. St. Catherine, Ontario. Yes, hi Larry, how are you? Fine. Um, I guess my question originally was whether Rock was bisexual or homosexual, but I think that has been answered by your yeah. panel. So what I'm wondering is if anyone can possibly name any of his uh, past gay lovers. Well, we had one that was famous because he appeared on this show and he sued Rock, did he not, Dale? That's absolutely true. And, and won that suit? He did win the suit. And he, he was the one that had lived with Rock, and didn't, he wanted yes. to suit because Rock didn't tell him he had AIDS. That's true. Was that one of the low features of the story of Rock Hudson? Well, I think that probably was a very low uh, Not story telling of, him. of Rock Hudson. Yes, but the interesting thing is, and I, I believe this is true, that while Rock may not have told him he had AIDS, Rock insisted that he also did not have sexual uh, relations with him after he himself learned he had AIDS. Oh, so he never endangered he it. He never, no, he, he insisted that. I mean, we discussed that when, the, when it finally came out uh, that he He's had AIDS. Uh, and and, and he, uh, he said no, <laughs> he was aware, and, and he had severed relations, sexual relations with Mark. It's a fair question, Elaine. Because that was a, that was the, about the caller asked a fair question about the person oh, yeah, who sued him, if anybody had... didn't like him, that person didn't like him. Yeah, I think that guy that called in must have wanted some phone numbers or something. St. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, Ontario, hello. Hello. Oh, that was St. Catherine, I'm sorry. We're going to take a break <laughs> and come back with more comments and more phone calls as we go to break. Well, what do you know? You're in love. The mighty tree has been toppled for years. I've been waiting to hear them yell timber over you. You could be right. You're down right, I'm right. You love her, and she can't stand the sight of you. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's what it is. It's wonderful. It almost makes these loose teeth worthwhile. Don't you love Tony Randall? <laughs> Tony Randall is wonderful. What, what, a, what a special, oh, special. He can, well, he can do anything. Star is. Did uh, Rock Hudson have an affair with Marilyn Maxwell Dale? Oh, that was a long affair. And they they both Hollywood. adored each other. Uh, they were a couple for a long period of time in Hollywood. Uh, they, they never married. Uh, and but it Marilyn, was physical. But yeah, yeah, sure it was. Oxnard, California. Hello. Yes, I'd like to ask uh, you ladies and gentlemen, please, uh, if anyone knows about uh, Rock Hudson giving his life to the Lord, to, to Jesus, uh, leading in to his death, a uh, nurse in the hospital or, or, uh, or wherever he was, uh, led him to the Lord. Did anyone hear that story? Does anyone know that to be true, Never Liz? Heard that. 
No, I've never that, heard it. I don't know that, it not to be true. That, no, that, that's a mistake. Uh, Rock in those days was incapable of making a decision of that sort, but uh, Pat Boone's wife, who is very, very religious, religious. Uh, visited him and tried to tried to bring religion to him at the time. He simply wasn't able to respond to Didn't it. Didn't respond at all. No. no. Was he in a coma when he died? Uh, he was in a coma when he died. What did you say, Elaine? I said he didn't. I forget what I said. It was so spontaneous <laughs> that I forget. You forgot it. All. <laughs> Larry, I want to tell you a little thing. The typical of Rock. He he loved to tell about his first line he ever spoke in a movie. They did 38 oh, takes yes. for him before they got it. And he that's the kind of kidder he was. He he had a real good take on himself. But you did know that one. One yeah, of the, I'm just, I'm sorry, one of the things he said to Bose Hadley when Bose said, who was Rock Hudson? He said there was no Rock Hudson, that the person was a myth, and he was just yeah. Roy Fitzgerald. Roy Fitzgerald, great, that's a great. Did, uh, Gina, did he make you laugh? <laughs> we laughed a lot, but uh, <laughs> I, I have an opinion that uh, when uh, he was young, and when I met him, uh, 61, he was uh, a different person than what uh, he became afterwards. Uh, after the episode, let's say, my film, uh, what happened with us, then I did uh, Strange Bedfellows. And uh, I think that was a change at that time. Uh, I don't think that uh, he was gay when I met him, but mm. I think that, you know, sometimes a lot of uh, men uh, uh, in the middle of their life, uh, for some reason, they change completely. Huh. It's not that they are born uh, being gay. This is what wow. I think. New York City, hello. New York, are you there? Okay, goodbye. Lincoln, Nebraska, hello. Yeah, I was wondering, um, when did um, he tell you guys that he was gay, and how did you take it when he told you that? Dale? We never discussed it. It wasn't necessary to discuss it because there was nothing about him that was anything other than a normal human being. Uh, we so have, he never said to you, I no, am? No, we, never we said had no words. reason to discuss what his sexuality was. He never said it to Tony Randall? He never said it to Gina? Did he say it to you, Elaine? What? <laughs> No, he never said it. Oh, to Oh, that he was no, gay. He oh, no, 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 no. Diane, did he ever say it to you? Never said it. Yes, yes, Diane, he, did, Larry. he yes. said it to you. No, what he said was to me, uh, and I have written about this in a spiritual health book that's coming out next year called "Spiraling Through the School of Life." He and I had long talks, and he told me that he had great guilt about women. He loved women. But he told me that he had difficulties because he felt that he had ruined his mother's body. And I said, what are you talking about, Rock? And he said, I was too big a baby. I said, what do you mean? He said, I was too big a baby. And I said, well, how big a baby were you? And he said, nine pounds uh, and a half ounces. I said, well, my, that's normal, Rock. He said, no, no. He said, I ruined my mother's life trying to get born. I tore my mother's body up. And I said, hold on there, Rock. My baby was eight pounds, nine ounces. God made us with pretty good equipment. Women tear and doctors fixed it up and we're as good as new. He said, no, 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 Diane. Believe me, I have horrible guilt. I ruined my mother's body. I said, who told you that, Rock? He said, my mother. And the story goes on even more. And I, I got to get, I got to get a break. But so the point was that was telling that you he, he was gay? That he had tremendous guilt about women. How oh. do you love a woman completely if you feel that you have hurt your own mother's body? That's a horrible thing to live with. Yeah. We'll be back with our remaining moments right after this. Don't go away. Oh, Nicole, we're in all this for you. My sister's still here, Paul, with us. She isn't. And I'm still guilty. Does that make it easier for you? No. You still resent the fact that I walked away without a scratch? Nicole's gone. And I'm still here. You can't accept that, Martha. And neither can I. 
Better hope this is a boy. Hmm? A baby. You just said I'm hoping it's a boy. What do you mean? I mean, why didn't you tell me? I'm telling you now. Well, honey, why didn't you tell me? I mean, well, I should have known. You sure? Sure. By the way, the scene we had going to the break was from Embryo with uh, uh, Rod, with Rock and Diane Ladd. One more call, Denver. Hello. Hi. I was wondering how long was he sick, and was he himself surprised that he acquired AIDS? Dale, how long was he sick? Oh, look. <clears throat> he was actually sick, sick for a couple of years, uh, but it, but the, it was the last six months where. He deteriorated a great deal. At death, was he awake, or was he had he gone into a coma? Uh, I was not there at his bedside at death, but I believe he was in a coma. He certainly was not speaking or anything like that. Tony, how's he going to be remembered? Oh, I think he'll be remembered as a movie star. Uh, you agree with that, Elaine? Yeah, I think he'll be remembered as a movie star, certainly, but I also think he'll be remembered uh, among his uh, peers at, uh, for his humor. Gina Lola Brigida's sculptures, by the way, she sculpts, have been shown in Moscow and Venice, and later this month they go on display at the uh, Musée de la Monnaie in Paris Museum. That display will run through December. A new t we did not know you did this, Gina. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Gina the sculptress. How, Liz, how do you think Rock's going to be remembered? Well, I think he uh, was like one of the ultimate of the, la of the last big movie stars of the 50s uh, mm. that followed the great wave of Clark Gable and people like that before him. But also this thing of his being the first really famous person to have AIDS, that is an, an indelible part of his legend. And uh, I hope he'll be remembered as the really wonderful guy he was mainly. His that work also on the focuses, screen is wonderful. Yeah. His death focuses the White House attendance, uh, attention on AIDS, did it not? Absolutely. We got... The Reagans the, were close friends. The, the Reagans were a very close friend. Ronald Reagan called me directly to get in touch with him and also put through the first governmental monies for AIDS research, $40 million. But I want to say that in addition to his being remembered as a movie star, I believe, and I'm very proud of this, that Rock Hudson will... Re be remembered as the hero of AIDS awareness because he wanted that to be His death, done. as Diane Lass said, death his was death important. saved lives. That's right. We want to thank our panel again. He, uh, his, he died 18 years ago tomorrow, October 2nd. We thank Tony Randall, Gina Lola Brigida, Elaine Stritch, Liz Smith, Diane Ladd, and Dale Olson. Before we leave you, we have some uh, sad news to share. Attorney Robert Kardashian died last night after a brave eight-week battle with cancer. He died at his home, surrounded by his family, and he was only 59 years old. Now, you probably first heard about Robert Kardashian as O.J. Simpson's pal and lawyer. Around here, we knew him as a pretty good guy, and he will be missed, and our thoughts and sympathy go out to his family. Life isn't fair. I'll be right back.